Welcome to Electro Online, and here to get a full picture of the of the concept of the molecular orbital theory, we're going to look at the first ten elements on the periodic table, draw in the type of bonds that they make with the electrons available to make bonding. Notice that some electrons can make bonds, other electrons will make antibonds, and so if there's too many antibonds, they'll cancel out the effect of the bonds and will not permit that molecule to exist. And so let's go down the line and put the electrons in each of the bond pairs as we know it. For hydrogen, uh, we have two electrons in the sigma 1s bond. For helium, we have two electrons in the sigma 1s bond and two electrons in this anti-sigma 1s bond, which means that these cancel out these and that molecule does not exist. At least the helium 2 molecule does not exist. Hydrogen 2 molecule does exist. For lithium, we have the two molecules in the uh, first sigma 1s bond, two molecules in the first anti sigma 1s bond, but we also have two molecules in the first sigma 2s bond. Since there's four electrons um, involved in the bonding and two electrons in antibonding, there's sufficient bonding taking place so that molecule can exist. For beryllium, we have two in the sigma 1s, two in the anti-sigma 1s, two in the sigma 2s, and two in the anti-sigma 2s. So therefore, the four electrons in the antibonding cancel out the four electrons in the bonding, so that molecule does not exist. Moving on to boron, we have two, molecule, two electrons like this, two antibonding, two bonding, two antibonding, and then we have one in each of the pi bonds for the two p, y, and z orbitals. So that molecule does exist because we have a bond order of one. To go into carbon, to here, to there, to there, to there, and then the extra two electrons that fill in the pi bonding in here, like that, one in each direction. So we have a bond order of two, so that molecule does exist. A diatomic carbon molecule, so then we have nitrogen, the same as before. These are then also filled, and then the additional two electrons will fill up the, the 2px bond. That's also a sigma bond, and so therefore this forms a very strong bond. You can see that the, the energy associated with the bond is very high, 941 kilojoules per mole, so that definitely is a molecule that exists, N2. So now we have the uh, oxygen molecule, and that one also exists even though it has two extra electrons, which now form an antibonding pair over the nitrogen. So we have this, we have those two right there, and then we have two additional electrons that are filling the anti-pi bond for the two p, y, and z orbitals, but there's still plenty of electrons here that form bonds so to overwhelm the antibonds, so the O2 molecule does exist, which is good, because we need that for our breeding. All right, F2 molecule. So we have those two electrons, those two electrons, those two electrons, those two electrons. The pi orbitals are filled, the sigma orbitals filled, and now we have a total of four electrons in those two anti-pi bonds. Still, the number of electrons involved in bonding overwhelms the number of electrons involved in antibonding, so the F2 molecule exists as well. And then finally we get to neon, where we find that we have the exact same number of electrons involved in bonding as they are in antibonding, which causes that molecule not to exist. And so therefore, neon 2 does not exist. So these are the three molecules that cannot exist because in those three cases, for helium, beryllium, and for neon, we have the same number of electrons involved in bonding as they are involved in antibonding. Notice the antibonding pairs right here, 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 and there. Same number of electrons involved in bonding as antibonding. We then determine the molecule cannot exist. A few more things that I really need to note. Notice as more and more electrons involved in bonding, the bond order goes up. It's a maximum of three for nitrogen. And then as more electrons come in that start forming antibonding, the bond order goes down. But as long as the bond order is at least one or greater, the molecule exists. Finally getting to neon, where the numbers are equal, bond order zero, that molecule does not exist. Bond lengthwise, notice that the stronger the bond order, the shorter 
the bond length, meaning the closer the atoms get pulled together in the diatomic molecule, because there's um, a stronger bond being formed, especially nitrogen, it's only 110 picometers. The exception, of course, is hydrogen, because those are very small to begin with, and so when they form, they come very, very close together. There's no antibond electrons in case of hydrogen, nothing to repel the bonding, and so you have a very strong bond as well, with a very strong bond energy of 436 kilojoules per mole. Notice that for lithium and beryllium, the bond energy is lower, but as the bond order goes up, the bond energy increases. It's a maximum for nitrogen, and then it begins to decrease as there's more and more electrons involved in antibonding. Also notice that in some cases, the electrons go in and they're paired up in such a way that they have the same spin direction, causes a paramagnetic molecule to exist, which is then susceptible to magnetic fields. So they interact with magnetic fields. If it's a diatomic molecule, that means that the electrons have the same number spin up and spin down, so therefore there's no discernible effect with a magnetic field. And so we have two of these molecules right here. We have the, the boron molecule and the oxygen molecule, which are paramagnetic, and we can do tests on them and confirm that. But that gives you a nice little overview of how the electrons form the different bond pairs and how that affects the bond strength and the bond length in each case. So, good overview.